What is going on, YouTube? PPS here, past the prop time. It is MLB show today. We got a full day of game starting here in three hours, going all the way till tonight at 8 p.m. my time. So it's, it's going to be a full day of baseball. Every team involved today. Joined as always by my guy, Sue. What's going on, my man? Nothing much. Like you said, I mean, these Wednesday slates, they're always fun. You know, they're always fun. It's nothing better than all day sports, especially when the NBA, they don't give that to you, right? We've been grinding that all year long. Even, I guess, college every once in a while, but it's always like the worst game ever. You know what I mean? So it's good to actually have like legit entertaining baseball. And for me, a couple of my plays are in that, you know, 345 slate. So definitely make sure you're watching out for these start times. You never want to have a bet that you love, you know, and you're ready to play it. And then you just forget and it starts. So we got some early at one. Then we got some 345. Definitely should be a nice slate today. Yeah, quick shameless plug. I did post YouTube play of the day video already. Those start at the early, early games at that noon time. We got games coming at you guys at that three time. I got one in that one as well. So I'm excited for that, that one. Um, so let's go over our um, plays from last show um, and take a look at those. I believe this one hit, didn't it? Yep. Lee got the job done for us pretty easily right there. And then he, he actually got the hit as well on the other parlay. Unfortunately, Altuve 0 for 5 with the 10 run game for the Astros. That always hurts your soul, but it is what it is. Split city for me. All right. I had a split as well. Berrios shoved on him. Freeland did not get the win in that one either. We ended up getting to Harold Ramirez. Um, and Paxton had four. He had four strikeouts. Threw awesome. Got the win. Did everything right. Just the amount of two strike counts, I was like, all right, we should get this. And then didn't get um, – was unfortunate. So – um that it is what it is getting to our spots we had a one and one show or two and two show so that would be seven and five only only got juiced out a little bit right 0.64 units so still over five units on the year can't go wrong with that so far um 5.7 units there um heading into today Stu, we got a huge slate um i guess what uh, what's the game catching your eye here that you want to watch as a fan? Maybe not the most bet spot, but uh, the spot you want to watch. Yeah, I, I mean, it's early in the season. So for me, like there's still a lot of teams that I, I want to watch a lot more of. Right. I think the Cubs Padres game is super interesting tonight. I mean, one cease, obviously off to a nice start. 13 K's only six hits allowed in that Cubs lineup. I mean, man, it's been fun so far, right? We're getting a little bit hot. They've been a streaky team like all of last year, right? They had a couple insane runs where they're one of our favorite teams to bet. And they also had some runs where they were like pretty easy to fade as well. So I think I'm going to be watching a lot of Cubs this year, but definitely excited to see that matchup tonight. Yeah. Shout out the Cubs for taking it to the Dodgers uh, more than any other team that we've seen here. What a, what a, what a game. Uh, two nights ago with Tatis, bringing them all the way back from eight down. They were down. I just stopped watching the game. I had it on MLB TV and watched um, a little bit there. And man, dude, it was it was wild. Uh, I, I can't believe they came all the way back. Um, but yeah, should be uh, should be a fun one there with those guys. I got a couple that I really want to watch. My boy Kikuchi's in town. You know I'm watching him. He's in the early slate, so I can get that one in. I just I'm betting on Kikuchi today. But I'm, I'm, like, nervous because how can Seattle be this bad offensively? I faded them three straight days, made money in DFS, three straight days, just straight fading them. I mean, there, there's got – these guys are professional hitters. It, it's kind of making me nervous at how much I am fading them um, this early. But th that, that lineup is absolute trash. Um, so that will be the first one, um, the late game. I'm hoping to see Jackson Holiday. Um, play a little bit today. We got Cutter Crawford on the bump, um, filling in for Pavetta. That's that's a lot better for him. I mean, I mean, I like Cutter Crawford, great pitcher, but can you imagine your first starts against Nick Pavetta with uh, Jackson Holiday getting to face him? Like Pavetta is absolute filth. Um, so lucky for him, he doesn't have to face him in that first day. Um, should be a fun uh, day out there. Um, I believe they're in Boston there, so I'm sure they'll get a, give him a little warm welcome. But uh, something you always want to watch is those. I mean, he's one of the most hyped prospects we've heard of in a while. Obviously, Cheerio got it last year. Um, he got to start up here, but they they kept him down. Got a couple games in there. Um, yeah, I just, funny. I just got the message from MLB saying, "Welcome to the Bigs Holiday." So 
Um, I think that'd be a fun one to watch. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's probably must watch TV tonight, honestly, right? With how much he's I mean, I'm not a prospect evaluator, nothing like that, but just the hype alone, you know, from from serious people that don't hype people up too often as well has been insane. So that that's obviously gonna be a lot of fun to see. That team is so crazy. I mean, that could be like if this new ownership, which it looks like they're ready to go, right? Bringing in Burns is their first move. Like this team could be, you know, in that kind of dynasty building, you know, stage right now. Yeah, and I mean Shout out to the Orioles, man. They've been drafting very, very well. Um, and a lot of people were not expecting um, Holiday to go there, right? Um, it, it's funny because you had – I'll go down a little rabbit hole here. But uh, you had – the consensus number one was supposed to be Drew Jones, which is Andrew Jones' kid. He was the consensus number – like everybody thought he was going one. It was like minus money to get him. Jackson Holiday wasn't even on the board. Like he wasn't even like a top three option to go one overall. And to see how he just at the hit tool is just elite. Um, good for them on drafting him because they could have easily just went um with the consensus guy. And obviously Drew Jones has had injuries coming up through the minors. Um, so that's kind of slowed him down. But man, dude, that what what a draft, right? I mean, it, it's uh pretty impressive. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, these guys are coming immediately now, right? Before, it was, what, like four years before you you, you even think you're going to see your guy. And now it's we're in the age where, like, these guys are shooting through the minor leagues and stuff, which I don't know if that's good for development or anything like that, but it, it's good for entertainment value at, at the least so far. Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be fun there. So let's, um, let's get a move in here, Stu. We got 17 of you guys live in the chat, first couple minutes. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, and then also subscribe to the channel if you haven't either. Uh, we appreciate it. Helps us out. Gets uh, hopefully more of you guys in here to take a look. Had a lot of views on the last show. Shout out you guys for tuning up uh, and getting out here for us. We got four plays. Four plays for this for this slate. I think a lot of them are in the early games. Um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. We'll drop them in the chat. Uh, I've looked at way too much baseball in the first two hours of being awake um, than I'm usually doing. So I'm trying to get all my stuff locked in before that first game so I can just enjoy it. Man. I don't want to have to to start capping like halfway through that first slate. So trying to get it all in there. So I've looked at a lot of the games. If you guys have questions, drop them in there. We will get it rolling. Stu, I'll kick it over to you for your happiness spot, and then we'll get it moving here. Sounds good. We're going to Austin Gomber over one and a half walks. This is an interesting one because I honestly wanted to fade Gomber in like 80 million different ways, right? This is a guy that, I mean, we've, we faded so much over the years, right? But to start the season, he's actually had like okay outings, right? I mean, he's for his standards, at least, he was away from core, so give him that. But four innings in each of them, four and 4.2, only gave up six runs in those games. Not terrible. Gave his team a chance to win. Surprisingly, they won both of those games, right? Which is kind of insane for a Rockies team right now. I like him in a lot of different ways. The no win is one of those. Um, this is not this play. But if he had two games where he had two good starts, he still didn't make it five teams. And his team won that game, right? But he still couldn't get the win. Then I'm definitely loving him for the no win again today. So just that's another one of the markets I think is valuable. And when you look at it under 15 and a half out, super juiced as well. I think the market is telling us a lot, right? Because so far... We're battling for this series right here. And I mean, the Rockies have been a little bit better than expected, right? But I think Arizona's going to come out and not play around with this game right here. Obviously, we know the core's effect. We know Gomber going from, you know, the, he almost a five-point ERA jump last season from, um, sorry, from road to home, given the, the incredible hitting conditions. When you look at this lineup, 388 average against him so far. In each of his last two games, he's walked three batters additionally. Um, his zone pitch percentage is down 5% since last year. And it wasn't great last year, but he's not even like like getting unlucky with these walks. He's just missing the zone a lot more than he was last year. And I don't think that gets any better when you now face a team that is really good against you and really good in general, right? You're pitching more scared in general. You're pitching not to give up 80 bombs a game, which is a very live outcome with the Diamondbacks, right? This is what the best average, the least strikeouts, and I think the fourth highest slugging so far against lefties. Like all intense purposes, this is an 
awful matchup for him. So for me, across the board, I see regression. I, I like betting against him in every other category. But for me, it, it's been clear. He's missing the zone more. The walks are up right over in four of his last total, but easily in each of his first two this season. For me, I felt like this was just the most underpriced out of all of his props, right? I like fading, you know, the outs. I like him not to get the win. But I think the walks number was just the best value right here. So definitely like fading Gomber today. This is This is the way we're doing it in the early slate for me. Yeah, I do not hate this at all. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know why his numbers are so much better at home. There's no real reason for it outside of just getting ground balls. And um, when you don't strike guys out and you're just relying on guys getting the ball in play, usually uh, I'm going to have to check his BABIP. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty wild how low it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely do not mind fading Gomber in Coors against the Diamondbacks team, who's got to show up today, dude. Like. Yeah. They've been like it's been top three or four in the order, and that's it. Um, and even right now, Gur Guriel is trash. This entire series, he's been trash. I've faded him in DFS, so shout out to him for trying to make me money. Maybe I'll play him today, and he'll go crazy. But uh, man, dude, he's been awful in this series. It's pretty much been Christian Walker, Carroll, and uh, Gabby Moreno, really just carrying this offense right now and getting a win last night, uh, three two. Like really, damn. So I think this is the day that you see it, though. A lot of the high leverage arms won't be in action today. Um, so I think we see a fun one here. I'm going to go to um, my first one. Since you started with walks, uh, I will start with walks. And I'm going to go Zach Littell. Under one and a half walks with the Braves alternate over six and a half. Let's just talk about the Braves. Both these games have been very fun to watch. Um, and I think the Braves just kind of gets the Mets going here, dude. It's wild. They got shoved on. By Detroit. Detroit shoved on them. They went 17 innings without a run against Detroit. They go to Cincy. Couldn't even wake their bats up there. Right? In one of the best hitting condition ballparks. Obviously, it's cold out. Not, not as nice as it is in the summer. But you go down to Atlanta, and these dudes just turn into just monsters, man. Now they're just putting up big boy numbers. They didn't have a run score till the seventh inning. Ended up scoring five last night. So, um, this six and a half, obviously, not the – the big play that I need here, Latell walks is obviously the the bigger one. Uh, but I just think anytime I can get the Bray, I can I see the Bray scoring seven in this game anyway. Uh, the face of Quintana, obviously Quintana's having a resurgence this year, but Tigers in your first matchup, like I'm not really that worried about it. Miami in another matchup, I'm not really worried about it. I, I think that this is a great spot for the Braves. Obviously, smoke left-handed pitching, and they just smoke everybody at home. So I love that spot. Um, going over to Latell and Shout out Zach Littell for this resurgence in his career because um, this dude has been awesome lately. Um, I, I liked looking at his um, – obviously, you can look at his Savant numbers. No, he's not walking anybody. Last year, he was, I think, top th top 1%. He was in the 99th percentile in walk rate at 3.2%. You go to this year, he's at 48 But he's been throwing extremely, extremely well. And when I look at these numbers where it's like, oh, this guy, you know, we, we've we heard of him, like we've heard of him, but he hasn't been like a big name, right? You're like, oh, he's probably getting lucky, right? His expected ERA is 1.7 and he's got like a 0.8 actual ERA. So it's like, it's not that lucky. This dude is a good pitcher. He's working around the zone. He went in the Coors and stayed under this number. Um, uh, and then he walked two in that first matchup against Toronto. Obviously, Toronto's a little scarier matchup than this Angel spot. Really, you're just worried about walking Trout, right? And, and that's the guy that you got to worry about the walks with. Um, what I did like to see was last year, very, very good against right-handed bats in terms of walk percentage. Uh, when you go against him last year, he had a 2% walk rate to righties, right? And that's really where you're going to have to uh, worry is because their best hitters are going to be from the right side in Drury, um, Rendon, and Trout, those are the big guys. The other dudes you can just go at, right? You're going to have to go at them like Ren Gifo, not worry about a ton of power, let them put the ball in play. But those th big three guys, they got popped. They still do. Um, Rendon's washed, but he's still, you know, he got a cool beard. So maybe that makes him more intimidating. But dude's trash. Uh, and they're bad to bleed off with dude who's probably got arthritis at this point because he doesn't ever want to play. Um, and then there's obviously Trout you got to worry about. But a 2% walk weight to – Walk right to righties. You got Chanel, right? Chenuel, whatever how you say it. 
up there as well from the left side. I'm not really worried about the other guys outside of those three big dudes. Um, and when you look at Latell with a 2% walk rate to righties, um, it's 4% to lefties, but he's actually striking those guys out at a significantly higher clip um, at 22% versus 16%. Um, I think this is the way I want to play it. I don't know if I trust Tampa Bay to let them roll that much longer. Savali only went um, five innings last last game, so I could look at strikeouts, but I think this is my favorite spot to roll with just because this is how he throws, um, trying to keep you on the ground, um, and uh, limit hard contact, right? And that that's the thing is, so far this year, it's unbelievable. The dude has a 24.1% hard contact rate. That That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I know it's only been a couple starts, two starts, uh, but one of them was in Colorado, right? Which is a which is a tough spot, and one of them was against Toronto. So um, obviously, good teams there, and or if not good teams, good spots um, to go with there. But just a huge resurgence in his career. Um, when he came into the league, he was a eleven percent walk rate, went down to nine and a half percent. Twenty twenty two, six point eight, and then the resurgence there with the Rays, who just find a way to make every pitcher better, gets it down mm -hmm. to three point two and now four. So. Love this spot for Latell. Keep it in the zone, buddy. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're talking about that development stuff, I mean, it feels like the Rays are just a machine with this, right? I mean, it's all these guys. And I know when you first said you had a walk prop, you know, and you said Latell, because I, I had a walk prop as well. I was like, oh, that's not the name I expected. I was thinking that he might be like at a 0 0.5 number or something like that. You know what I mean? So I think it does have to do with name value a lot of the time, right? You, you We associate different pitchers. And if you're a big name, we know you walk a lot of guys. I mean, what's, you know, what's Snell going to be every week, right? Some of these other guys on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So I definitely like this spot right here. Definitely run the combo. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the, the, that game, that Braves game should be interesting because Quintana's been okay, but I don't want to run a lefty ever. I don't even care who you are. I don't even want to see Snell going up against these dudes. I want nobody. I don't want to see any lefty against this Braves lineup with how good they are. Um there all right Stu. let's get two plays three and four sounds good we're going back to jung ho lee under a strikeout minus 125 over on bet mgm for me played this out a little bit more juice last game in my opinion what was a, a light a slightly worse matchup i don't know i mean corbin and williams are kind of um, you know, in the same kind of category right here. But when we look at it, right, I mean, I, I talked about it in the last one. Lee only had four strikeouts um, in the whole, uh, what do you call it, preseason, right? In that 48 at that sample, that was good. And then he's come out in the major league so far. And once again, only 48 strike or sorry, only four strikeouts. Um, so from what we've seen, a lot of what we thought we were getting when he was brought over, right? It's been transferring. This is a guy with good contact skills, right around almost 300 for expected batting average, or actually I think he should be over it now after these two um, national series. For me, it's one of those things that there's one profile that I'm scared with, with Lee right here, and it's high velocity guys. That's the number one thing that scares me. When you look at his uh, baseball savant, he struggles pretty hard against the fastball. And when you go even more and you go through the game logs, for me, it's pretty abundantly clear. It's the guys that are throwing absolute gas because that's what the one thing that you can't really translate from a professional career overseas. They don't have the 100 mile an hour every pitch guys. So for me, the protection skills have been amazing against anyone outside of that. So when I was looking through the number today, I saw it down to 125. I thought Mackenzie Gore, that makes sense, right? We got some high velocity. I went and I looked. It's Patrick Corbin, right? And I get Patrick Corbin K's more lefties than righties. But, I mean, come on, right? I mean, we saw what happened only two K's in that first Cincinnati series. He had a better start against a struggling Philly team, right, where they still ended up losing that game. And now we go back here. Lee hasn't struck an out against a lefty so far this year. And what I have noticed is these guys that are great contact guys – when they, when they face guys from the same side, I feel like I almost like they're, they're under K better. You think, unless it's an elite strikeout guy, like it feels like they go even harder into protection mode. I noticed that with Arias last year. We're like, sure, the numbers aren't as spectacular because he's not as great against lefties, but he goes into like mega protection mode because the power is never there, but it's definitely not there against lefties. So for me, the bullpen is cooked. I already talked about Corbin. I talked about being scared of Weems. And Harvey last game. Both of those guys pitched last night 
and Finnegan pitched last night. So Washington and Finnegan kind of sucks, by the way. But Washington's three best relievers are all toast for this game. They're not going to be available because for once we've actually had two winning games in back-to-back -back nights. That never happens, which means you're going to see, oh boy, even Garcia pitched last night. It's going to be like, it's going to be real rough. Whoever they have to turn to, it's going to be pretty rough. So for me, I think Lee is going to avoid a strikeout once again. I'm sure the hits and stuff like that is another good angle. I'll probably be looking for maybe a hits parlay, something like that. But I think this is the best angle for this prop against Patrick Corbin. Yeah, you don't even have your your Nationals legend on the team. Who do you think I'm referring to who's not on your team anymore who was a Nationals legend as a pitcher? Well, I loved Carl Edwards Jr. last oh, year. Okay, that's well, not it. Well, well, well. Who, he, who ain't are legend, we here? he ain't a legend, bro. But he was a legend to me a little bit, no, okay? He's a Cubs he legend. He's a Cubs legend. He is yeah, not of a course, of course, of course. Ready? The legend that you guys are missing this year, your boy, Paulo Espino, bro. He ain't Whoa. there no more. <laughs> eat up nine innings and just get wrecked. Dude would just get left out there, and the dude would die on his shield for his team. That yeah. is what I'm saying. That yep. dude was a legend because of how many injuries, garbage starts, all that stuff. Hey, Paulo, give me six, bro. Go out there and eat up six innings. I don't care if you give up 12 <laughs> runs. I don't care if you walk nine dudes. You're staying out there, and I don't care what happens. That is an absolute legend. Paulo yep. Espino, he is not there anymore. So I don't know what you guys are going to do if Corbin goes three innings because you don't, you don't have that legend, bro, uh, in Paulo. Because I, I just saw him throwing for somebody else. I don't remember who it was, but I, I know he's not there anymore. I saw him come into a game. I'm like, what? Where, why? Yeah. I didn't even know he was there. Um, I'm going to have to look it up in a second because I know he's not there anymore because I just yeah. saw him pitch. No, I was trying to think where he would have ended up this year if he, he was even still in the league. But you're right. He was the ultimate, like, just Blue trash. Days. Yep, yep, yep. He came, he came in to follow up Kikuchi in his last start. That's why. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do miss that guy. And that it, 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 they, those guys do save your team. You know what I mean? Like, when, when you're there and you, you're toast, right, and you can just have someone that goes out there and gives you, like, four brutal innings. And he spot started, right? We yep. faded against the Phillies multiple times in those, like, day games at one where they just – threw him to the wolves so i'll definitely miss him but we'll find someone like that this year for sure it might be our guy juana Doan again who knows yeah yeah that was uh weird to um see him getting the start yesterday too so all right last play for your boy i'm going to that same game actually i'm going to be going to the giants i would damn we got a lot of plays in this early slate i'm going to jordan hicks to record the win here at plus 150 um Unbelievable price on DraftKings. I think this is fantastic. And you talk about it. Um, <clears throat> we got a Giants team with a with a fully rested pen. You got a you got all the dudes back there because they've been getting smoked. They've been getting wrecked in this series. Um, and I think this is a game you got to get. You have to get it as a Giants fan. You, you know they're not going to be hunting towards the top of this division, right? You're not going to go catch the Dodgers or anything like that. But you got hopes for a wild card spot. You, you got a decent team here. Jordan Hicks has been awesome. He's been fantastic. Um, 12 innings so far this year. We've seen him get up to 90 pitches in some of these games. But for me, the reason why I try, I, I want to back this spot is the Nationals, they're feisty. Man. They're a feisty team. They're trying to draw walks. They're, taking, they're you know, trying to put the ball in play. Right, That's their job. What do I like about Jordan Hicks? You've seen him change how he pitches now to become a starting pitcher. He was throwing 101. He's now sitting 96 with his sinker, getting a ton of movement on that pitch. And I think that's going to really help him in this spot, right? You're looking at baseball savant here up for this year, 23 inches of drop. You're seeing the 16 inches of break um, horizontal from when it leaves the hand. That's, that's a pretty big movement for a guy throwing 96. Obviously when you see him throwing 103, it's a little more intimidating, but what has come from that, him dropping that velo, this dude went from an 11.2% walk rate down to two. That is unbelievable through two starts. Obviously, both of them against the same team. But I would definitely put the Padres higher up on offensive standards than the Nationals. You got the park upgrade as well going out to San Francisco. Um, yeah, like I said, I think that's why the Nationals are doing so well here is because they're trying to put the ball in play. And this is a huge park, right? It's huge to the gap. So this is probably a better park for them because they just don't have any pop. And against Hicks in this spot in a day game, um, you got Corbin here. I, I, I'm i perfectly content fading Corbin. I wanted to bet the Giants. I wanted to bet them, but their price is getting too high. They're going to give me this guy who I trust to go deeper in games. We saw a 90-pitch outing. We saw him 
avoid the walks so far. Yes, I know the strikeout rate hasn't been there. I don't need it to be. Um, the hard hit percentage hasn't gone up that much since moving into this role at 34%. That's pretty good. Expected ERA sub two. Um, I just don't know why this price is there. I, I really like um, this price at a plus money spot. And I don't know if I trust, like I said, even if, Cor say say we see Corbin have a master class, like Vital said, no master class. I'm, maybe he does, right? Maybe he goes five innings, gives up nine balls to the wall um, that would be out by 50 feet <laughs> in Washington that are now out here. Um, and you come into the sixth innings. We've seen Jordan Hicks go into the sixth inning. We see him go into the seventh inning. And you just talked about that bullpen. I'm taking that 10 times out of 10 here. Um, and I think that we definitely have the advantage in that bullpen today, at least. So um, I'm rolling with Jordan Hicks. I understand this might be a, a weird look because you're, you're not used to seeing him in that starting role. But I think he can get deep enough in this game for the Giants to score a few off of Corbin and scratch and claw a couple. Um, so I'm going to be rolling with Jordan Hicks to record the win, plus 150 on DraftKings. Yeah, I think if you asked me to guess the price, I'd probably say like 120, you know, maybe 125. So I think getting, you know, way better than that here is really nice on us. I, I mean, you look at the Giants' money line sitting around that minus 200 range. Like you said, Corbin on the other side, Hicks actually being able to get deep into these games. And it's not like – it's not like it's a fluke, right? If he was throwing, you know, still 102 and just gassing everything out and he was somehow avoiding walks, that's one thing. But like you said, there's been a shift, right? He's actively trying to stay as a starter right now, which means calming down in the velocity department and sticking around in the strike zone, which is something he hasn't been able to do before. So definitely like this spot right here. And you, did, you we kind of talked about it, right? If Corbin, you know, giving up, it's 2-2 in the fourth inning, and Patrick Corbin now has to go around the lineup for the third time, you know, coming back in the fifth because they don't have a bullpen guy to go to. Like, that's exactly what you want as a Giants backer right here. So definitely love this. Very surprised you're getting such a good price. But I think the market probably isn't quite there with Hicks kind of new role yet on this Giants team. So I'm definitely loving this price. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just looking at it. Even if you wanted to look at like just the money line number, man, it's you're you're paying a premium two to one minus 205 in that spot so i think it's just because i don't think people expect him to go that deep in the game and and yep. that's understandable that's understandable so uh i like seeing him uh control the ball here and not walk four dudes every game so um Stu, that is all we got here let's take a look at the chat we got vital popping in here uh, we got terrence in here as well um bland fam old patrick balls to the wall corb and yeah th those why you get caught today unfortunately because uh, he's in probably one of the biggest parks in baseball. This, Patrick Corbin might need those Giants to go pick him up so he can just get that ERA from 14 down to nine, you know? Yeah, maybe the athletic, something like that. Let the guy work in a little bigger ballpark, okay? <laughs> and again, we can hopefully get under 10 maybe one of these days. All right, so let's recap here, and uh, we'll get a rolling. Sounds good. We got Jung Ho Lee under a strikeout, minus 125 over on Bet MGM. Then we got Austin Gomber over one and a half walks, minus 120 for half unit over on DraftKings. Beautiful. And I'll be on Jordan Hicks to record the win at plus 150. Zach Littell under one and a half walks with the Braves alternate over six and a half. That is on DraftKings there. I do not have a long shot yet, Stu, unfortunately. What what do you, do you have one or uh I have a single home run bet that I've placed so far with I, I got Josh Naylor to hit a homer against my guy, Eric Fetty, because I like Eric Fetty, but he, he's going to, he's got a new like pitch mix, but the, the power problems are still there. Like the stuff still isn't amazing. You can dance around the edges for a while, but Naylor's what 529 slugging against righties finally heated up with that homer with the power. The average was already there, um, but the power is coming through a little bit more now. I think Fetty leaves a couple hanging in this one. I think they're probably a, a couple bombs personally. So I don't know. I, 475. Okay. Or that's the DraftKings price. I've not line shopped this one yet, but I can. Pull up the trusty Picket Sports code yeah, yeah. PPP, by the way. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I can see if there's a better price on the market right now. Real quick, do you have any long shot action for today? I forget. I don't yet. Um, I, dude, I can't believe we're this far into the day and there's one lineup posted. It's only the Dodgers. I kind of need that lineup 
um, for a few of them. I might try to do an alternate total over in that Diamondbacks game, um, maybe. So mm -hmm. I think that might be a look. Um, it's just those core prices are nuts for home runs. Even RBIs are crazy. So um, I'll probably post one in the description or in the chat underneath, but I only ha I don't have any um, so far today. I need some lineups. Come on, boys. You slack and game starts soon. Let's get those lineups out. Yeah, and I, I see 520 on FanDuel as well. So you do get – yeah, okay, you got it. You beat me to it, Terrence. But 520 over on FanDuel is the best price. And I, I see it, Gonzo asked about Jimenez as well. He's 700 on DraftKings right now if you want that. Wow, nice. All right, Stu, I guess I'm good. We're good here. Um, quick, 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 quick. Who is your uh, Who is your pick for the Masters? Oh boy. Quick. Oh boy. Quick. I mean, it's Hideki Matsuyama, baby. We're running it. We're running it. 25 to 1. It's my only bet right now. I love Neiman, but I didn't love the price, so I didn't bet him. I can't bet Scheffler. I see people like on Twitter, like, oh, if you like Scheffler, just parlay him with someone else. That's terrible advice. I don't know why I keep seeing this from smart people normally. Do not parlay Scotty Scheffler with whoever you think is going to win the Grand Prix or whatever. That is. Bad advice, point blank. Please do not do stuff like that. I've seen it a lot this week in like major spots of like, oh, if you like Scheffler, just parlay him with something else you like later and you can hedge on. It's like, no, that's, that's awful advice. But I, I can't bet Scheffler. I'm just not going to bet him at that price. So I'll take the L. I'll sit in that, you know, I'll, I don't know who else I'll have to add. But for right now, Hideki's my guy. I love Hideki. I'm riding with him. What about you? Who are you riding with? Uh, I want to bet Neiman. I, I do want to bet Neiman. I think I'll take him in a top five number. I think I'll do something like that. I don't know if I want to take him to win. You know who I've been really liking? Um, I I want to bet. I will be betting Steven Yeager in the first round. Top 10. Yeager bombs. I love Yeager first round. Top 10. <laughs> plus 650 for him just to be in the top 10 or ties in the first round. The dude's a first round monster, bro. I don't know if any. If you haven't been. If you haven't been betting, DF, like I've been doing DFS every single week for golf, like the last six months, getting myself ready for all these majors and stuff. I just haven't taken into the betting side. But I'm like, I play Steven Yeager in Showdown every single first yeah. round. This dude is a wagon, and I'm going to bet him at plus 650 to be in the top 10 first, um, first one there. I have to go um, with um, Mr. Neiman. Uh, I like him a lot. And I also like Siwoo a little bit this week as well. I like both of them. Yeah, um, maybe a little Aberg as well. Um, and he's gonna find my way to my card. Um, uh, just because I think he's too dumb to know any better. You, you know, he's just gonna go out there and hack, baby. I love that shit. Let's go. It, it he he's great vibes. That was that was a great sweat last week, too. Well, the, the other name I didn't mention, I haven't bet him yet. I'll 100 percent bet him. Cam Smith, easy bet for me, hundred percent. I I it's Hideki and Smith, it's clear. I want to around the greens, right? I want someone that you're gonna be in shit spots in the masters, right? It's a hard course, you're gonna be in bad spots. I want like guys that can make magic, right? The Spieths, right? Hideki has proven he can make that a magic around the greens. Cam Smith has proven he can make that magic. So for me. You know, those are going to be the kind of guys I'm looking at. I mean, Aberg is definitely interesting, but 30 to 1 is, is a little out of my range. But I'm, I'm a sucker for these lives guy, live guys. Brooks is a winner. He wins majors. Like, it's hard for me to not bet Brooks in some way or another. I don't know if that'll be like a win or a top 10, you know. I like your Siwoo call. I'll probably go top 10 there, though. I don't think Siwoo can win. Oh, he a like this. <laughs> He'll get close and then piss you off. I still remember when he broke his putter that one time and I had him to win. I was, I was freaking out. So I don't know if, you know, I think Siwoo could be like a DFS, like real good DFS pick this week though. Yep. He'll find his way into mine. I think he's like 7,100, but I, I think I'm going to fade the top of the board, go sell three, seven Ks, three, nine K guys. I don't think I want to go to the top. So We'll talk about it. Uh, I'm happy to see that we're – I have a lot of guys in here. Um, don't mind that. I um, think he could have a lot of walks. I think I would leave more walks there. Thoughts on Phillies Cardinals first five over five and a half. I hate Aaron Nola. I would probably just fade Aaron Nola there uh, more. Uh, so, All right, Stu, we're out of here. Best of luck on the Masters. Hopefully you get some winners. Hopefully you, you, you pick that winner there. Hopefully you'll send me your card before the um, night is over here. Um, I know you got spots over on Twitter. Make sure you follow Stu over there. Just posted my YouTube play of the day before the show started. We're ready to roll. Back Friday, normal time. 
We'll get you guys in and out of here. We got plays early. Make sure you lock them in early and often. So thank you guys. Best of luck today. And uh, let's make some money.